Johnny from WP Johnny, and right now I'm going to do a quick review of the Gelastic multi cloud platform software. So I'm going to explain what it is, what it does, and how it's different from existing web hosting or cloud service management solutions. So um, I'll just do a quick little like history of, of uh, control panels for servers. Basically, uh, traditionally, we used to install software like cPanel or Plesk onto servers because it gave you a nice little graphical user interface so that you don't have to type commands from you know a command line and, and it's not user friendly you know you, instead with Plesk or cPanel you have nice little icons to click on you can easily import export databases FTP users whatever right um, basically makes your web hosting management experience that much easier and user friendly for your end users and your developers um, now, nowadays, we have cloud panels, okay? So these are control panels that are hosted on the cloud and you pay like a monthly fee. Um, for example, like Cloudways, RunCloud, uh, GridPane, right? So these, they manage your VPS instances. VPS is now very popular, they're cheap enough and user-friendly enough thanks to these uh, cloud panel services. And many people are installing VPS, they're getting a VPS and then installing um, something like Cloudways on top of it. Now, there's a limitation with these because all these panels traditionally, they can only manage one server at a time. They, they manage standalone, they manage servers in, in standalone instances, okay? Uh, if you wanted a server cluster, so I have a little diagram, little image here from Gelastic that looks nice. So if you wanted a server cluster, which is like a typical uh, HA environment, high availability environment, where, for example, you have a load balancer at the front. It's like a traffic conductor, right? Then you have the two web servers. Uh, the load balancer will see which web server is um, less busy and it sends the traffic there. And then the web servers, if they need, they will send requests to, they'll make requests to the database servers, okay? And the database servers send information. Um, and then, you know, behind the database servers would also be the storage servers. And of course, each layer could be could ha could have as many servers as you need. So if you if two web servers is not enough to serve your traffic, you can have two, four, six, eight, twenty, a hundred, whatever. Database servers. If you need ten database servers to handle your massive e-commerce transactions, okay, you can have more. So that's what server clustering is for. It basically allows you to scale up and host uh, gigantic or really demanding applications, web applications, websites, whatever. Now. If you wanted to manage a server cluster, there's basically only three ways you can do it. One is to do it manually. So you set up all the software yourself, HA proxy and then Nginx, and then you have to configure the ports and then the, the server configurations and configure the firewall and the security to make sure that, that the database servers only accept requests from web servers, internal cloud web servers and not like from the public internet. Um, so there's that. Okay, so the other way you could do it, you could do something like uh, like cluster CS, right? So this is kind of like a Cloudways run cloud grid pane, but it can manage server clusters. Okay, you could also do something like Amazon Web Services, right? So I'm sure you guys have seen AWS, and if you go to their their page, they've got like a hundred services, right? They got EC2, they got web servers, storage, DNS, CDN, uh, database like a billion they have like a billion cloud services out there now the only thing is um up until now to manage your own cluster was really hard to configure it took it took a lot of time a lot of technical knowledge and it wasn't easy and then just over time you still have to manage it okay and then if you wanted to make it elastic which means to auto scale up and down that's also an extra layer of complication so you needed to have a DevOps on your team, so this is highly trained personnel who know how to work with this. Um, and it can be very expensive and just basically a, a lot of friction, right? So you don't wanna spend all that money and you don't wanna have all that complication to manage. Well, Gelastic makes it super easy, super accessible. Let's get started, let's jump into the panel. So I'm using Scaleforce provider in this, uh, in this demo right now. So Gelastic is kind of like cPanel. You can get cPanel from many different providers, many different data centers. Um, you know, you can look up Gelastic providers on their website and then pick the ones that you like based on price or qu perceived quality or because they have they cover the regions that you want. Um, normally, uh, you'll have a whole, whole bunch of stuff here and you don't see these three options. So typically I go from up here, let's go to new environment. So I'm doing this manually. 
okay do I want SSL built in yeah custom SSL we choose balancer let's use an nginx balancer right we can use ha proxy or the lightspeed adc we'll use the nginx balancer and then for the web server for the php server you can pick whatever let's pick nginx it's cheap it's free let's put memcache for object caching sql maria db but you can choose whatever version you want um, this mongodb and stuff because i deal with wordpress we don't really need this storage do i want extra storage okay why not for this thing uh what what version uh, what OS so yeah CentOS 7.7 but again you can pick whatever you can pick from an image and then uh, is there anything else that you want on here you can add it um, is there anything else you want on here you can add it it's over here so this is the vertical scaling you can decide um, how big it gets okay so how big each server so we can do this is like a small amount and then we'll let it scale up to that size and then this whole time as you're doing this you can see the price change Okay, that's fine, that's nice, I don't care about that. Um, you can also decide on horizontal scaling, like how high it can go. Um, let's see, uh, stateful, stateless, okay. And scaling limit up to, so you can you can decide, oh, I see, so that's that. Um, if this limits, whatever uh, variables, I believe we really don't actually have to mess with any of this at all. Yeah, this is uh, just server junk, server variables and whatnot. Okay, volumes, links, more, and we yeah we don't need to play with that. Um, so do we want to make it elastic? That means it, it uh, auto scales and resizes, right? Instead of a fixed instance. Okay, um, and then let's go name our instance. So oh by the way, so you see this provider is only in the UK. Uh, you pick other providers that will have other regions or more regions. You know, pick what you like, pick what you what you know or what you think is the best. What other people tell you is good. So since this, uh, this is my little demo, let's just call it WPJ demo, and it's available. Oh man, okay, um, demo, there you go. And let's hit create. So just like that, in a few clicks, in like a minute, I've created, uh, I've, I've just deployed a server cluster, a multi-server cluster that is elastic, will scale up and down uh, with my traffic, right? If I have a ton, it'll upsize. If I don't, it'll downsize. Now, there's another way to do it. You can just go straight from the marketplace, okay? And you can choose from your favorite, uh, your software. So um, I don't deal with all that other stuff. I typically deal only with WordPress. So here, let's look at the options. We have a standalone WordPress now because I'm showing you clustering stuff. So let's pick the cluster business. Okay, this is huge, right? 24 gigs of RAM, I don't need that. 16 gigs, I like this. This, this feels about right. You know what, why not? Let's go big or go home. So I'm gonna set that one up and then let's call this w, WPJ Enterprise. So that's our big cluster. Here we can decide, we wanna add CDN, multi-site, whatever, um, production, pick your, you know, is it a production server or a de development server? We'll click, uh, just look at the options, yeah. We'll click install. Just gonna minimize that, get that out of the way. There is yet another way to deploy. You can go to Git. All right, you can add different repositories from Git uh, out there. So wh whoever's got a third party Git, you can make your own uh, based on your script and your setup that you like and just deploy that directly onto here. So I'm gonna deploy, uh, I think I'm. Th this one is the, the latest WordPress, right? So here, let's just go here. Let me see if I can highlight this. Can I hide, oh, come on. Right, so let, maybe there's software that's not on their marketplace already, but is available on GitHub. So this is just basically WordPress, okay? Um, so let's install that there, the latest version of WordPress, and let's deploy that as well. Deploy to the, okay, I think I have to name it. So let's just do Word, WordPress and Git. Yeah, WPJ Git, I'll deploy. We'll just, we'll just do it like, oh, I, I can't, no items. Oh, I, I'm sorry. So this is software that will deploy to our existing environments that we've created. So um, that's another way to do it. Uh, this should pop up a any second now, maybe because I picked, I, I probably picked too many nodes. So it'll maybe take like a minute or so. Um, but once it goes up, it's super easy. And it's a lot of fun. As you can see, I, I, and I swear, this is like the second time I've ever gotten in here. Uh, the first time I did, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I felt very comfortable with the setup with the panel right away. Um, oh, cool. Okay, so this is my control panel. 
So I can like add users, I can allow other people into this panel and, and probably there's probably granular access. I can decide who has SSH access to, to my environments, okay? Uh, just so you know, this is the end user panel. So this is like the developers panel, all right? Um, let me show you what the admin panel looks like. So this is what the admin panel looks like. It's more like server, server and hardware and data center related stuff. Um, you most likely won't have to deal with this. The software is already installed onto your provider server. So all you have to do is jump into the developer panel and use it from here. Um, yeah, I think it is helpful if you have sysadmin knowledge or you are a DevOps, it's helpful, but you could be a total Joe Schmo like me. And if you follow some YouTube videos, some basic documentation guys, um, you're gonna be totally fine. Now, uh, the first couple, um, you know, when I did this the first couple times, the last time I was in here, I created a whole bunch of small environments, so they popped it right away. This time I was, I was making giant ones, so they take a little more time. Um, also, I wanted to show you guys, there are three different editions. There's the cloud edition of Jelastic, which is like what comes, uh, what's installed on like club, uh, public cloud service providers. Okay, so if you're buying it from a data center, you're, you're, you're getting, um, you're purchasing cloud services from a data center, they'll give you the cloud business edition. All right, um, public cloud edition. Then they have the private cloud edition. This is like if you have your, your own giant enterprise that you're managing or you own, you have your own bunch of server farms and whatnot, you install it onto your private cloud. And this you pay um, uh, a fixed fee based on the size of your servers and how many servers you have. Whereas the public cloud, you're paying per resource. So public cloud, you're paying, let's say 15 cents per resource. And then of course you resell it to your clients at 25 cents per resource. The last option is the uh, private cloud light edition. So this is really cool. You can install uh, Gelastic onto Google Cloud or DigitalOcean. So this is really awesome. Um, and I'll tell you why I'm kind of really excited about this one. So if you get digital out, if you get digital ocean, you can get Gelastic for free. You just pay for the digital ocean droplet and the Gelastic, uh, the Gelastic panel software, uh, panel software is already included in the marketplace. You can just install it onto your droplet for free. It'll manage your droplet, scale up or down or add more droplets, uh, depending on however you configure. So it's free, guys, that's a lot of fun to play with. I, I, I would totally mess around with that, okay? Um, all right, so our environments are up and running and let's let's see, let's see, we have our cluster one up. Okay, so they, I see, it was firing both at the same time. Maybe that's why it took a little time. So this one, and there you go. I can see my PHP version and all that. And let's see if, uh, let's see if there's an application. Did I install an application in here? No? Mm, probably not. All right, uh, how about this one? You know what, here, let's deploy this. I'm gonna deploy this to uh, WPJ demo and WPJ, let's just call this um, WordPress latest. Man, there's so many names and, oh, I, I can't put a, there you go. All right, and I deploy this application onto this environment and it should be already loaded. I shouldn't have to, nope, not that, sorry, excuse me. It, oh, here it is, it's still still going on. It's fine, we, will, we shall wait. I'm gonna show you guys uh, how the settings look. This is really, I mean, really, really easy. Here, so you can choose your custom domain for this, uh, could be something.com. You can swap domains with another cluster. So for example, you had a live and development clusters, you can quickly swap, that's really cool. Custom SSL, you can set it up. SSH access, you can set it up. Endpoints, um, what is this? Oh, okay, okay, so you can connect different um, di different services left and right and, and open and close ports. Firewalls, you can go here. Uh, here's your inbound, your outbound. I mean, this is really easy to see, really easy to manage. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm so happy, very, very surprised, honestly. So you can monitor all this. You can uh, decide what to monitor, I believe, and decide how it's monitored. Uh, you can add more monitors. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm not even gonna not even gonna bother that. Load alerts, auto scaling. So here, 
ah, there's no auto scaling rules. So we can create a rule that says uh, if the load is more than 80% for five minutes, then we will add three nodes. Uh, we'll scale up to three nodes one at a time. Uh, down here, we will remove nodes so it can scale up or down. It'll remove nodes if the environment is if the environment load is less than 10% for 10 minutes and scale all the way down to one node or, or maybe we say don't go below two, right? So again, and oh, send an email notification when it's scaled. It's really simple, really intuitive to understand. I didn't read any documentation. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, and I'm sure if you do read the documentation and the YouTube videos, tutorials and all that, you'd understand so much more. Uh, okay, so you can decide who has access, you can share, you can add owners, you can change owners. Uh, you can migrate this to different regions. Um, you can export, you can clone this environment to somewhere else, another server, another provider. Um, so it, it, is, it, it is really, really impressively easy. And okay, is my WordPress thing up yet? And here we go. All right, thank you. So there you go. And it's up. I have a, an elastic cluster, server cluster running in a matter of minutes. I don't know what I'm doing and I got it done super easily and as you can see this is it's really it's not confusing at all it's incredible so um, tying all this in what are the main benefits of of Jelastic the first thing I would say is you can very easily set up an elastic server cluster so you can set up a super powerful cluster to meet to meet any app application demands you, you have a website with 100 million hits Okay, it goes up and down, whatever. It, this, this, uh, this setup can scale up for that very easily. You don't need to be a super trained DevOps. You don't need to have so much technical knowledge. You just get in there and get started, get to working on your apps. Um, oh, I can clone environments too. The second thing you can do with this is the, the whole Elastic model. So the Elastic model allows you to pay only for the resources that you use and likewise charge your clients or you know charge your customers only for the resources they use so this is very different and it's advantageous from the fixed model because typically uh, traditionally let's say you're hosting a big application you might have to rent uh, 10 servers and you're paying for the cost of 10 servers but the thing is most of the time they're only at 20 percent load it's only like on the weekends or maybe during business hours that they have heavy load so that's a lot of cost for you that's a lot of cost for your client um, but you know, and not only that, but you, you can't scale as big, you can't do as many things. So now, because you're only paying for what you use, you can have like, theoretically, 10 servers. This one for database, this for CDN, this for uh, this region, this one is a clone, this is, you can have a million different servers doing a million different things, and you're only paying for the resources you use. So that's really incredibly powerful. It's not just cost savings, but it's flexibility and, and power. The third benefit is that Jelastic will allow any data center or any a web host or a cloud service provider to basically compete with Amazon Web Service and Google, a Google Cloud Platform, right? So the thing is that Amazon Web Services, they have so many services all you know, neatly integrated together. The only problem is that they're still a little cumbersome. The UI is very clunky. It's very technical and they're expensive because they got that name brand recognition so you're overpaying for it. But Jelastic makes it cheaper, easier, and you can do all that. At the end of the day, um, to integrate multiple cloud services is basically being able to integrate multiple servers, right? Um, and to pay per usage, pay per resource, as you would with Amazon Web Services. So uh, that's what it is. It's a lot of power. It's really easy. It's really fun. Um, you can operate on a different billing model, and you can compete with the big time uh, cloud service providers. I hope you like this video. It's too long already. Um, I will post the written review on my website. You can see the title and you can also read my full written write-up. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.